My favorite stories from motorcycle history are the ones where a company or a person bravely sets out to do something that they've never done before. From figures like Philip Vincent and John Britton trying and successfully building the fastest motorcycles in the world, to companies like Honda going after the two-strokes by building higher revving four-strokes, and even to Harley Davidson going racing. Ah, Harley and racing. Two words that rarely go together in a positive way. From the steep decline in flat track racing success to the sad and tumultuous Buell racing saga, Harley has had its fair share of failed motorsport attempts, but today we're looking at the little known story of Harley's attempt to go Grand Prix racing and how they won the most prestigious championship in the world in multiple classes, multiple years in a row. In all reality, this story doesn't start in Milwaukee or America at all, but rather in an Italian motorcycle and airplane factory from the company known as Ermaci. Going into the 60s, Ermaci had proven itself among the finest Italian manufacturers, building lightweight machines machines on both the road-going and race side of things. But notably was the Alla Rosa and Alla Verde 175 and 250cc four-stroke sort of roadsters based on their previously unsuccessful and, albeit uglier, but still remarkable predecessor, the Chimera, or Chimera. Armachi would build racing versions of these motorcycles, but little needed to be changed however, the road-going versions were incredibly capable as sports machines, they handled amazingly, they utilized very powerful brakes for how light they were, and they sat very low. Armachi's history building airplanes really had given them an advantage, and these bikes, along with their capable smaller road-going models, attracted the attention of an unlikely investor, namely Harley Davidson. Now heading into the 1960s, Harley's lineup could not be further than that of Ermaci. But Harley needed the kinds of bikes that this little Italian company was producing, especially if they were going to stay relevant in European markets. By the way, if you're paying attention, this kind of thing is still happening today even with Harley Davidson, but that's another subject for another video. Now in spite of overall motorcycle sales booming worldwide at this time, Harley sales were on a downward slide, and Ermaci was the perfect company for them to partner with. Ermaci had already proven that they could work with an American company on the airplane side of their business, and Ermaci needed a new plant for their budding motorcycle business. As it turns out, Harley needed the same thing. Now on the racing side, Ermaci had just debuted their first running prototype of a complete 250cc factory racer that would later be known as the Alla de Oro. Now that year the bike was raced at the German GP, Dutch TT, and the Belgian Grand Prix, with that final race resulting in a fifth place, so not a bad start for them. In many ways these promising results prompted Harley's interest, and Harley made sure that a stake in the racing department of Ermaci was part of the deal when they took 50% ownership. Harley wanted to go racing, and this really was their chance. Now going forward, Armachi race machines would bear both the Armachi and Harley Davidson names, and by the end of 1960, Armachi's race machines across Europe were really beginning to show their true colors, sometimes outpacing the nearest competitor by over a mile in non-Grand Prix races. At the Grand Prix level, however, through the early 60s, Honda dominated the smaller classes with their high-revving four-strokes. But it's easy to forget how many other great machines there were on the grid at this time, and Armachi's race machines were no exception. During these years, Ermachi Harley would continue to develop and improve their 250cc platform, upping the horsepower to 29, and at the end of 1963, a new 350cc version was announced. Meanwhile, in America, Ermachi Harleys were also starting to take hold, with the popular Sprint model becoming a sort of staple in Harley's lineup, as Harley slowly made these little Italian machines look more and more, well, Harley. But despite decent sales, Ermachi production motorcycles didn't advance much over these early years, especially in comparison to what companies like Honda were offering. Sure, these bikes looked more and more like Harleys, and yes, they were small, more affordable offerings, but through the 60s, small production motorcycles were becoming more and more advanced, and really more performance-oriented at lower prices. But looking back, the glimmer of hope for Harley among all of this was what Ermaci was doing in race development, partnering with Harley. And Harley did play a role, not just in helping to fund this development, but really push Ermaci in the right direction at certain points. Like most Italian race machines at this time, Ermaci's race bikes were fast but fragile. This is a way that I've described MV Agusta's for all of history. Very fast on the road, 
but kind of fragile. Now, with the help of key figures like Harley's race chief Dick O'Brien, Ermachi's road racers became more durable and more usable for professional riders. In 64, the Ala de Oro Ermachi race machines were transitioned to a dry clutch setup. Now, this bike would be a necessary step up in performance and handling, but Ermachi and Harley would never win a Grand Prix championship aboard this four-stroke motorcycle, despite all of its improvements. Suzuki's two-stroke takeover, thanks to their sly corporate espionage, was well on its way in the late 60s, as well as Yamaha's two-stroke takeover, but, you know, everybody was kind of taking the tech that came from MZ and then also from Suzuki. So at this point, Harley and Ermachi would have to go back to the drawing board if they were ever going to get a Grand Prix title, and they were behind when it came to building two strokes that were fast. In the 1950s, Walter Codden developed the necessary changes to make small two-stroke race machines the fastest, most powerful motorcycles in their classes. Suzuki then stole that technology and began dominating the smaller classes. But by 1967, when Ermachi decided that they had to build their own two-stroke racer, these secrets were entirely out from the specific resonance needed in what we now know as common sort of bulbous exhaust for two-stroke race machines, to all of the porting necessary, and by 1969, the Ermachi Harley 125 two-stroke race machine was finally somewhat competitive, placing 10th overall in that year's series, and in 1970, the little two-stroke got its first win at the West German GP. It was a promising start for the Italian-American duo, but something big needed to happen if they would ever even come close to taking the championship in any of these classes, because it was so competitive, and needless to say, they really were the underdogs in the face of giants like Suzuki and Yamaha and MZ, who had loads more experience developing powerful two-strokes. But then in 1971, Ermachi Harley unveiled a new 250cc twin, basically two 125s slammed together, weighing an amazing 254 pounds dry and producing 46 horsepower at the rear wheel. Ermachi and Harley could have released this bike for the 71 season, but they chose to take basically that entire year off just to test and develop and perfect this bike, as well as develop a 350cc version, and this proved to be one of the best decisions that they made. This is really true of a lot of companies, just taking your time is the best way to go often. So in 1972, against an army of Yamaha two-strokes, the new 250cc twin from Ermachi and Harley took massive wins in Italy, Spain, Yugoslavia, though the 350cc wasn't available in time for 72 to make any massive waves, the 250cc two-stroke took second in the championship with the brilliantly talented Renzo Pasolini right at the heels of arguably the best rider in the world at this time, Yamaha's Jarno Saarinen. Now it looked like Harley and Ermachi were poised to potentially contend for the championship in 73, and they decided to develop the bike further with their first liquid-cooled engine. In the long run, this would prove vital and eventually seemed to be perfect, but fate and ultimately sheer negligence would have other plans. In May of 1973, at the Italian Grand Prix, what would become known as the darkest day in MotoGP history happened. Oil was left on the circuit from the previous 350cc race, oil that riders had warned officials about, causing an eight-bike pileup taking the lives of both Yamaha's Saarinen and Harley's Pasolini. Pasolini was a true rising star at this time on Ermachi Harley, and even at this race, he had just had one of his best performances yet on the 350cc Harley, coming out of nowhere to take the lead from Agostini, only to have his bike seize at the end of the race. Now, there's all sorts of blame that has been placed on different people. Even the new hero that we're about to talk about in this story was blamed until his death, that is, a 350cc racer who apparently had something go wrong, and yeah, all sorts of blame was laid, but ultimately, it really wasn't one specific person's fault, and most people believe that oil was just left on the track. Needless to say, Yamaha's lineup was, as the kids say, much deeper. And understandably so, this event really dampened the excitement for the small Ermachi Harley crew. Even at this time, they'd been developing a fascinating four-cylinder 500cc two-stroke that was shelved at this point. Point as well, if this hadn't have happened, Ermachi could have went on to dominate all classes. In the end, it was a veteran backup racer named Walter Villa who would be the first to take Harley Ermachi to championship victory. That's the guy who is actually blamed for a very long time for causing the accident in his 350cc race in some way, but you know, there's really no evidence of that. But he would win the 1974 250cc class and bring home the first championship 
for Hermachi and Harley. At this point, the 250cc twin was producing close to 60 horsepower at 12,000 RPM, and Villa's Grand Prix victory couldn't have come at a better time for Harley. Under a relatively new and somewhat odd ownership from AMF, these were Harley's darkest days, but winning the most prestigious title in racing certainly helped keep the company alive, especially in Europe. Now, Walter Villa really proved himself to be a star for Harley, if somewhat late in his career, because the next year in 75, he would take the 250cc championship again, this time with ease, absolutely dominating the pack the entire way. And then in 76, Walter Villa would take both the 250cc and finally 350cc championship on the Harley Ermachi race machines, a rare feat in motorcycle history to be a double champ in one year, which is held by very few racers. Now, financial struggles, at the Italian factory, no doubt affected by AMF's ongoing struggles and poor leadership, honestly, led to Villa needing to compete on a non-factory supported team. The little race bikes were no longer getting improvements at this time when there was just rapid developments in racing, so they never stood a chance going forward, despite actually taking second and third in the 250cc class for 1977, but then it was all but over for Armachi. Now, I think it's easy to assume that Harley had very little involvement in Armachi's success in building road racing machines, and of course, most of the credit, in my opinion, does go to the brilliant engineers and teams and racers at Ermachi. But right at the beginning, and then also the peak of Ermachi Harley two-stroke race bikes, well, that was also Harley's beginning and peak in developing of their own iconic race bike, one that would prove itself to be the very best in its own class for decades, and that was the XR750, though not on the road, rather in the dirt. And Harley developed the XR750, which was released in 1970, and this bike would go on to be arguably the single most dominant race machine in all of racing history. Now, I think Harley really towed the line perfectly when it comes to Ermachi's race success on the Grand Prix level. Provide what's needed, namely funds and support, but ultimately let the experts do their thing. And you wonder what would have happened with this company going forward if the funds had been there to maintain factory support for their race bike. But that's just it. That's all that was needed. And Harley really couldn't provide that anymore. No more was needed. And that doesn't take away from the fact that on record, Harley Davidson has Grand Prix Championship titles under their belt. But, you know, in the same way, imagine Ermachi trying to come over and tell Harley how to win at flat track racing. Most of you will remember the fiasco that was Harley's stake in another Italian company also based in Varese, namely MV Agusta from 2008 to 2010. Now, that partnership did not go near as well as the partnership with Ermachi, but, you know, Harley was looking back at that former partnership hoping maybe to build race machines once again, and MV Agusta could have been the company to do that. This was also the same time as the Buell Saga, another attempt at racing glory from the American factory. The thing is, MV Agusta and even Buell, these were different kinds of companies than Ermachi. I mean, even Harley is a very different company today than they were in the 50s and 60s. The world has changed, racing has changed, these partnerships really at this time did little more than starve Harley. Obviously, there's more to it than that. You know, it takes two to tango. I'm not saying they were not at fault. And we know that that's especially true when it comes to Buell, you know. Obviously, Harley did not do everything right at this point, but also Buell was making some weird, almost silly race motorcycles that just really didn't work. Who knows, though? Maybe the time is ripe for Harley to once again take a stab at Grand Prix racing, whether through another similar partnership, or maybe Harley could build their own race machines. Or maybe the world has just moved on from this kind of thing ever being possible, and maybe the kind of David and Goliath story that was Ermachi Harley isn't possible today. But I guess time will tell. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, watching this video, consider subscribing. It's really a great way to support me. Just hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. That way you know right away when I upload. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Ride safe.